Hi everybody and welcome back to the Nerd Shelves. My name's Michael and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, we're not going to be talking about an actual board game, but I wanted to talk to you about my table mat. Um, I've had some comments about people asking how I got my table mat or where my table mat came from. And uh, so I thought I'd make a video and show you guys how I made this tabletop mat for board gaming. Um, it's perfect for, for people that don't have the space or don't have the money or don't have a dedicated room for an actual board gaming table because a mat like this, well, you can just fold it up, roll it up and store it away. So come join me at the table and I'll show you my board gaming mat. So as you can see here, I have a quite a large mat because I have a pretty large dining room table. Um, but the great thing about these is that you can actually make them in any size. Um, I actually have three different sizes that I, that I have made. Um, this one is for my dining table. I have one that I use for um, either the kitchen table or in the living room. And another great thing about them is, is that you can, um, you can roll them up especially the smaller ones, and you can take them on holidays, you can take them to a friend's house, I've even taken them camping. So um, the, these mats are really, really great. So basically all I did was I went to my local fabric store and I, I bought um, three different materials, okay? So this mat is actually made out of three, um, three layers. Um, when I go traveling or when I take it with me rolled up, I usually only use the top two layers, but when it's on the dining table like this, I actually use three layers. So first, the top layer here, it's just, um, just a velvet material. You can use any, any color you want. You can actually use any kind of material that you can find at your fabric store. Um, but just something soft, something that the cards can run on um, when, you're, when you're dealing out cards. Um, it's nice to have them slide a little bit. But this is just really cheap. I think um, for a whole roll of this, I think I only spent about 20 Canadian dollars, not very much. Um, so yeah, so what I liked about this material is it actually had a back on it um, that was, was a different material, it was cloth. And what that did is, is, is that made it stick better to, to the under layer um, so that it didn't slide very much. So that's what I liked about this. I have other mats that are different material and they all work just as well. Um, I just, I really like this material. This is the color I wanted, so this is what I chose. But the beauty of this is that you can choose anything you want. So yeah, that's the top layer, okay? Now, the next layer is, okay, this is something I found at the local fabric store. It's called Silence Cloth. Um, it's like a thick, dense, um, cotton almost. Um, it comes in different materials, but it's called Silence Cloth. And what it's usually made for, its main purpose is for um, under tablecloths on dining tables so that when you put the dishes down, it doesn't make a lot of noise and it protects your table and um, from heat and things like that too. That's why it's called silence cloth. But it's the absolute perfect thickness and density to go under this mat so that when you roll your dice on it, or you know you, you hit the table, it just has that really nice, dense, cushiony feel. There's enough cushion that when you push cards down, you can easily pick them up without bending the cards. And it, that's what I just love, okay? So that is the top layer, and then the, the next layer was the silence cloth. And then, I, this is optional, you don't have to do this, but the bottom layer, I just use this, um, it usually goes under rugs, it's just like a non-slip mat. Um, if this layer is thick enough, then um, the pattern of this slip mat won't show through. Um, I have used thinner cotton underneath, where then this pattern actually shows through on the mat. So you wanna be careful about that. And you don't even actually need this layer. But what this did is, is when the mat is laid out, it just made it so that, um, you know, when people are leaning on it and putting their elbows on it, it doesn't actually slip. So that is something that I used. Um, and again, like I said, you don't need that. When I go traveling or when I, when I take 
a rolled up mat with me. Um, I, I never use this, okay? So, so that's it really. I mean, it's really quite simple. Um, one other little trick that, uh, that I learned along the way was that every layer I cut a little bit smaller, okay? So the bottom layer is actually the smallest. So when the next layer goes down, it actually overlaps the edge. So I don't know if you can see that here. So here's the, the slip. And then that layer is just a little bit larger. So it overlaps. And then the last, the top layer actually overlaps and it hides everything underneath it. I actually, when I first made this, I cut them all to the same size. And then you could see all the bottom layers underneath and I didn't like that very much. So I just cut all the other layers a little bit smaller and now the top layer just folds nicely over top and it lies on the table and you have a perfect table mat. Um, I have some other sizes here. So like I said, even different colors. So these are some smaller ones that I use and they're rolled up and I take them traveling with me and I take them everywhere I go. And that's, so you have three different sizes. And that's it. That is how I made my tabletop gaming mats. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, I'm sure there's lots of other great ideas of table mats that you, you've used in the past. Why don't you share them in the comments? I would love to hear them. And uh, go ahead and get another game off of your nerd shells. Take care, bye.